Now, I'm not judging anyone for going through this different method of meeting people instead of your traditional through a friend or going to a pub or going out to meet your potential mate for the long term. Dating has probably changed drastically over the past decade due to technological advancements where not only do we now not really tend to meet people in the conventional way anymore by, I don't know, going out to a bar, pub, or even meeting through friends or other means, it's now being pushed towards this, where you can go onto a dating app and meet potentially the love of your life through your phone. But there is something to be said about these dating apps and how they're not all as inclusive as you may think. Since the pandemic hit, it has of course been quite difficult to meet a lot of people um, to try and find your compatible mate. So people have signed up to a lot of these dating sites. So in this report, I'm going to be going through three of the biggest dating apps and showing you how politicized it is and how it is not as inclusive as you may think. The three main dating apps we're going to be diving into are Hinge, Bumble and Tinder. I wanted to quickly say I've never heard of this particular dating app but I thought it would be worth having a mention that they don't take too kindly to someone who has a differing opinion on in terms of COVID. It's a, it's a dating app called Thursday Dating where they put up recently <laughs> We're adding an anti-vaxxer badge to profiles where if you see one, please report the idiot and we'll ban them from Thursday. You're welcome. Now, I've never heard of this app. Just a casual bit of medical discrimination there on this app. So no wonder I've never really heard of it. And they've also made their location boosted. <laughs> Deary me. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. So... Let's begin with arguably the most respected one out of all three. We'll start with Hinge. Hinge is a pretty straightforward app. You make your profile, you add prompts to try and entice the person that you're matching with to be, I don't know, you could put, probably put something that's funny or a bit witty to try and prompt someone to think, oh, they're interesting. I quite like the sound of this person. <laughs> then you have a section called Vitals where of course, you add your information about yourself, such as your name, your gender, your sexuality, of course, age, height, location, ethnicity. And then there's other things that they've added. Pronouns is a big one where you can select up to four pronouns. She, her, hers, and then he, him, his. But then it moves on to uh, they, them, theirs, vi, ver, viz, zay, here, hi's, or hers. I can't even say it. Or you can just put not listed. So, and what you'll find with all of these apps is that they really push for these gender pronoun stuff. So, <sighs> need I say more? Next, you go on to sexuality. So, you've got, of course, the conventional straight, gay, lesbian bisexual then you've got a list of other ones which i'm just going to go through um haven't heard of probably 99 percent of these but we'll go through them allosexual androsexual asexual i've heard of that one autosexual bicurious demisexual fluid gray sexual i can't even say this. is it Gynosexual, monosexual, omnisexual, pansexual, polysexual, queer, questioning, scoliosexual, spectrosexual, not listed. I'm not sure if this is going to be YouTube friendly. There's not much else other than children, if you have children or not. Or family plans, if you don't want children, want children, or you're open to children. You can also toggle whether this is visible on your profile. And then you've got the COVID vaccine. Yes, you can put 
your vaccination status on it. What I find interesting with this though, there are only three options other than prefer not to say, and that's vaccinated, partially vaccinated, or not yet vaccinated. Pretty bold assumption there. Not yet vaccinated. Okay, next you have your virtues, so your place of work, your job title, school that you went to, education level, religious beliefs. You got the traditional Christian, Catholic, Jewish, Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, interesting, agnostic, and atheist. Spiritual though, I don't understand what that means. And then the one that puts the most people off and creates more of a divide. Politics. With four options to choose from, liberal, moderate, conservative, or other. It is no surprise that if you have conservative on your profile that um, you're not gonna get as many matches as if you put liberal. And then last but not least, Hinge has got vices, they've called it, where you show that you're a drinker, you're a smoker, marijuana, Okay, and just drugs in general. <laughs> They've also added a preferred preferences tab where if you pay for an upgrade, you can choose if there are particular types of people you'd like to match with. For example, politically, if you wanted to match with someone who's just liberal, you have that option to do it, but you can only pay to do that. And you can pick as well if you wanna match with just drug addicts. Okay, you then make your profile and you're set to start dating in this virtual circle. The next dating app we're gonna look at is probably the most popular one out of all of them. And it's probably the one that will probably give you an STD if you meet up with most of the, the women or guys on it. That's Tinder. So a bit like Hinge, when you're editing your profile, you put your photos up. You put your about me section so you can put whatever you want in there. And then you pick five passions, all from Netflix to picnicking. And then you've got environmentalism. Okay, vegan, board games, dog lover, language exchange. Maybe you like a bit of trivia, tattoos, pubs, skiing. Politics is on there. And then you move on to the lifestyle part. And this is a new feature, apparently. I'm just going through it. Where it tries to understand what sort of a person you are. So already you start with the zodiac signs. And if you believe that nonsense, God help you. Your communication style. Next, your drinking habits, of course. Your Myers-Briggs personality type. We've all seen them floating about on Twitter. Your food preferences. It says if you have any pets as well. It also asks if you exercise. Not gonna get some truths in that one. <laughs> your love language as well. Whether you're into physical touch, quality time, acts of service, or words of affirmation. And then the COVID safety. The COVID comfort zone. What is your preference? Virtual only, mask and distancing, social distancing, mask up, or no mask and social distancing. Here's the thing that people have been noticing about this app, however. It is very geared towards the psyoped minds of this COVID stuff, where they display ads in between you swiping, where one of them encourages you to have your first date on video chat, so you don't meet in the conventional way of meeting up. And another one says, be a hero, wear a mask. They have profile stickers where you can put things such as getting vaxxed soon, vaccines save lives, immunity together, and display that you are vaccinated. Peak virtue signaling. Next is the safety center where it shows you tools on how to unmatch someone, have privacy settings and how to report someone. But then you've got resources <laughs> where it shows you, I believe different companies who are intertwined with Tinder. And I just wanna read some of them out. You've got a company called Sexwise who <laughs> give you 
consultation on STIs, STDs, contraception, pregnancy, unplanned pregnancy, the whole shebang. The NSPCC, Missing People, Action Fraud, the LGBT Foundation, and Stonewall. We've all heard about Stonewall. Oh, and they also have a partnership with the NHS, where it says to find out if you're eligible to book a vaccination appointment now, please visit the NHS site. And last but not least, we have the worst one, in my opinion, of them all, and that's Bumble. And with Bumble, the woman speaks first. When you match with someone on the app, the man cannot speak to the woman first. It doesn't give the option for the man to actually communicate first. So like the other apps, put your photos up, you have your interests, your prompts, your bio. However, there's a few things that I've noticed. What would you say your interests are? Maybe it's hiking. Maybe it's cooking or some sort of sport activity. Maybe you're into boxing. You'd think that they'd be conventional styled interests. Well, they've added things such as values and traits and Bumble's values and allyships. So let's start with values and traits. You've got things such as ambition, being active, being family orientated, being open-minded, but we know that anyone who has that on their profile, they're, they're not. Let's be honest, they're not. Being romantic, empathy, self-awareness, social awareness. And now for Bumble's values and allyship, and this, hold on to your hats for this one. The first one is Black Lives Matter. If you've put in your values and traits being family orientated, but then you support an organization who wants to eradicate the nuclear family, you need help. Environmentalism, of course. Feminism, human rights, LGBTQIA plus ally, stop Asian hate, trans ally, voters rights. And lastly, the COVID dating part of Bumble, where you can pick your COVID preferences to meet virtually, meet in real life, or you're okay with both, and that you're happy to meet outdoors only, indoors, or open to any setting. When meeting, you want to be socially distanced, or if you're happy to distance, or it can be relaxed. If you're happy without a mask, or masks are a must. Whilst these dating apps harvest your data, and I read an old article saying someone asked for their Tinder data and it sent 800 pages of their deepest, darkest secrets where it knows the ins and outs of your personal secrets to help with their algorithms. If you've had an argument with your husband or wife because you may disagree on an opinion or a stance you may both have on COVID or something else, don't get divorced. <laughs> I'm fighting big tech censorship to bring you a voice against these divisive vaccine passports. Now, whilst I talk to you on camera, we have a designated set of people to help set up this giant petition and a special website for you to visit and sign your signature. My promise is to hand deliver these signatures to the doorstep of the Houses of Parliament. So visit www.fightvaccinepassports.co.uk and have your say.